Hey guys, it's Greg from Bake Almond again, and today we're going to take a look at Alma Linux, a brand spanking new drop in replacement for CentOS developed by the folks at Cloud Linux. It spawned shortly after the unfortunate kneecapping of CentOS. And personally, I think it's really cool when a community, and yes, yes, I know it's backed by a company, but by community here, I'm referring to the overall user base, is able to come together so quickly and create something which, in theory, works really well. So why don't we uh, give it a look-see and see if it's any good. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. All right, why don't we first start with a little background here on where all Mega Linux came from and why it even matters. In case you're unfamiliar with what happened to CentOS, you can check out my previous video on that topic over here by clicking the link in the upper right corner. But the gist of it is that as of CentOS 8, Red Hat decided to drop the traditional CentOS with its point release clone of RHEL in favor of CentOS Stream, which puts CentOS just ahead of RHEL in the chain of updates with no point releases, and effectively makes CentOS the testing ground guinea pig for future RHEL releases. It's not a huge change, honestly, and to me it kind of makes sense making the community-backed free product be the guinea pig for new changes to the paid and supported enterprise version. But alas, taking things away from the community never ends well, and it also sits poorly with me, personally, just dropping the expected 10-year support for CentOS well early at the end of this year, which only gives it about two and a half or three years of support. Not cool. Since then, there have been a few projects popping up in an effort to more or less replace CentOS. This one, in fact, being backed by the folks at Cloud Linux. There is also Rocky Linux, which was started by the original founder of CentOS, though it's not quite up and running yet, and Oracle Linux as well, which has been around for quite a while now and is backed by Oracle, which <laughs> is both good and bad, mostly bad because of Oracle, if you want to dip your feet into the waters of, of other replacements. All of these are binary compatible with RHEL, meaning that any software and configurations that are targeted at running on RHEL will also work on them and vice versa. This is great for software support and makes switching over to them from CentOS a breeze. Now, before we get into the weeds with Alma Linux, I'd first like to mention what I'm expecting from it, or at least what my initial expectations were since I've already looked at it prior to this video. Anyway, what I'm expecting is pretty much a drop-in replacement for CentOS. After all, they're doing the exact same thing CentOS did when I started by building from RHEL's source packages and changing some branding so as to not infringe on Red Hat's copyright, which is what made it a RHEL clone. So if that's the case, where maybe I have to change one or two lines of config, then I'll be happy. Most software anyway that supports RHEL usually just points out a tag like EL7 or EL8, which is referring to RHEL and its clones and not just RHEL specifically, so they don't have to create duplicate packages, bindings, or whatever else to also accept CentOS, and now Alma Linux and others, when it's all just the same. And in theory, this should let me use anything that previously supported CentOS 8, such as SaltStack or Ansible or anything else, right away without having to wait for the upstream maintainers to officially support it. So yeah, off we go now on our way to finally installing Alma Linux and poking around to see how it actually works. Installing it seems exactly the same as CentOS, with a graphical installer that walks you through all the steps to get your system up and running, just with some minor branding and name changes as you'd expect, and you'll also need to point to the Alma Linux software sources instead of CentOS's, which honestly, again, is to be expected. You can configure your networking, install packages, initial users on the system, and everything else that you can while you're here. You can also use a good old Kickstart file to automatically install it, which is my preferred method for doing things in my home lab. I was able to simply copy my previous sent away Kickstart file and just change the URL to point to the Alma Linux repos. Easy as pie. After booting up and logging into your installed system, you're greeted with a standard GNOME 3 desktop, which I believe is the default desktop for RHEL 8. This marks a change from the RHEL and CentOS 7 approach of shipping GNOME 3 with several extensions to make it look and feel a lot like a modern GNOME 2 desktop, with an option at login to choose which experience you prefer. But alas, we're stuck with GNOME 3, and a pretty standard one at that. The default software selection is rather typical, though this will change with the package selection you choose when installing. Since I chose the workstation group with Office Productivity Suite, Internet, and GNOME apps, I have myself Linux kernel 4.18, GNOME Desktop 3.32, LibreOffice 6.3, Firefox 78.9, Evolution Email Client 3.28.5, Rhythmbox 3.4.2, amongst others. Again, this is a rather typical selection of some popular software choices, 
mixed with some of the GNOME suite, though again, this is all easily changeable as with any other Linux distribution. Anyway, that all really isn't that important since for the most part, RHEL and its clones are mainly used as headless servers where you'll be using the command line for most of your work. And Alma Linux is just as, as you'd expect there. You can SSH into it. Don't forget to disable or restrict direct root login by SSH since that is enabled on RHEL distributions. You can manage your packages with yum or DNF as such, like a yum search Firefox, yum search transmission, whatever. And yeah, it's the same as before. Playing with it as a server in my home lab, I had a lot of luck with things just working. It's magical, things working is. I was expecting some software to be like, I don't know what this all my Linux noise is, use something we support. But I haven't had any issues with that in SaltStack or any of the other third-party repos and software that I use. So, yay. Awesome. So yeah, the point of this video really wasn't to give you all an intro on how to use Alma Linux, since it's already very familiar and doesn't really do anything that different. In fact, it's just a clone of what you'd see in CentOS 8 until it hits its EOL. And that's a good thing. It's not meant to disrupt the Linux community by offering tons of new fancy features or taking a once stable distribution and updating some packages more frequently to fit a niche's needs, nor is it taking a great and popular distribution and detoxifying a little bit like Linux Mint does with Ubuntu. It's simply just trying to fill a void, and it does a great job so far at that. Instead, the main purpose of, of this video was to draw attention to one of the projects that was able to put together a working release to replace CentOS. Red Hat may have cut ties with the, the traditional CentOS for whatever reasons they deem fit, but there clearly is a want and need for a really long-term OS solution in the Linux community even if all the new kids have moved on to Ubuntu LTS for their server needs, and CentOS is mainly just used by the neckbeards. And even if there are other operating systems that provide support for several or even 10 plus years, there are definitely a good chunk of users, system administrators, and others that just prefer working in the Red Hat family for one reason or another. And honestly, having a free clone of RHEL, I can see only helping it in the long run which is honestly why I'm surprised they refocused what CentOS was instead of just creating a new product entirely. CentOS has been for the longest time like the, the entry stone into RHEL and understanding what RHEL is because even if RHEL doesn't cost a whole lot of money, it still costs money. And a lot of people in their home labs or whatever don't want to spend that money. So they would just turn to Ubuntu or Debian or something else that is free. Whereas with RHEL, it's like, oh, I use this at work. Maybe I should put CentOS on my servers at home and workstations at home so I can learn on it and get used to it. And that seemed to work for a long time, but you know, this is where we are. Anyway, moving on, my three main concerns at this point are one, will any of these new CentOS clones gain enough traction to be viable? Two, if any of these clones do gain traction, how will Red Hat respond? And three, how will the community handle the potential fragmentation if multiple do gain traction? Admittedly, these three concerns are more theoretical and more way down the road thinking of the project and others like it. But when you're talking about an OS that gets 10 years of support, it's kind of important to consider the future of the projects. That way you're not stuck in a bad situation, say five years down the road. And again, you have to transition to a new OS because the project backing your OS decided to cut ties with it for whatever reason. My first point is rather straightforward in that a working CentOS replacement is cool and all, but it isn't really worthwhile to use if the project doesn't get enough traction to be getting support in the long term. And again, since this is a distribution with a focus on long-term stability, assessing the long-term viability of a project is super important. It'd really suck to get hyped all right now and switch all your systems over expecting support till the late 20s, only to need to switch over again a year later because the fork you chose ended up folding due to infrastructure costs or something weird. My second question honestly isn't a huge concern since Red Hat does have a track record of being rather open and often even supporting efforts to fork and clone their technology. This way they allow their community to grow instead of trying to milk every cent out of it. Plus, it would also look really bad if they now started taking issue with open source community projects built around their ecosystem. The problem here is that now Red Hat is owned by IBM. How much has its attitude changed and will IBM instead try to find some way to protect its IP and try to force customers back to RHEL if they want to use their stuff? Again, it's not likely. I just get a little paranoid with these larger companies buying out smaller ones and changing the culture. It just sucks when it happens. 
And finally, my third point about fragmentation is something that has been a huge problem for the Linux community over the years. There have been some great strides made on this recently with a lot of Linux distributions adopting similar technologies or at least using interoperable ones. But this could be a big step backwards if multiple rel clones gain traction and there is lots of bickering over basically which branding to stick with. And trust me, lots of Linux users will team up and fight over less. Software freedom and choice is great. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But it can be very intimidating for new users when there are lots of choices and not many, if any, clear reasons to choose one over the other. However, to wrap this all up, those concerns of mine really aren't worth worrying about right now, as they're merely just ponderings of a madman, and certainly should not deter you in any way from using it, or even anything like Rocket Linux or Oracle Linux. Only time will tell if this is the new CentOS, but if you want this or Rocket Linux or even any other new project that may crop up to succeed, then you should use it and strongly consider supporting it in some manner, be it through donations if you can afford it, or since these projects are open source, you can help out with contributing code, reporting bugs, helping out on the wiki. There are tons of things you can do, and any little bit will go a long way to ensuring a longer lasting distribution. That all being said, since Alma Linux is backed by Cloud Linux, which is actually a decently sized organization, I'm not sure if they really need your money to stay alive. But the other points definitely still stand. Even joining their communities on Reddit and such will sh help show them that there is interest in their work and it is worth continuing to support Alma Linux and possibly even in the future when RHEL 9 and such are out. The little stuff does matter. And so that's all for now. I'm really excited for this and I'm honestly looking at integrating this into my home network more to make it less of a just Debian place. Multiple Linuxes is always fun and I'll definitely be looking into contributing somehow. But I'm also curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are on all of this and if you're going to use Alma Linux, wait on Rocky Linux, or do something entirely different. So be sure to leave a comment down below. As always, like it if you liked it, subscribe to get notified of my upcoming videos, and join the Discord server to chat with me. I will see you next time.